Thank you. Uh, glad to see all the audience here. Uh, I think that uh, the, at the end of first session, uh, there was quite interesting uh, discussion started. And um, I will somehow try to uh, continue uh, the discussion about uh, that we are uh, looking for an answer and nobody uh, still knows uh, one solid uh, uh, solution of uh, problem of uh, the energy. Um, I'm Igor Mischer and I'm civil engineer and it happened that I used to be uh, chief engineer of such a uh, project like Bluestream and the Yamal Europe pipeline. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, in a tough position. Not now talking to you, of course, but in general. When I holding elections uh, for the youngsters in uh, Gupkin Oil and Gas University in Moscow, uh, sometimes they are asking me, maybe we are wrong. Maybe we have chosen uh, wrong uh, speciality. And that uh, will happen that in uh, several years, uh, no any specialist in hydrocarbon energy will not require it anymore. Um, sometimes it's difficult to answer, especially there was a, a presentation and I asked the question why it happened that no any uh, power generation with a natural gas uh, calculated, mm, and I think, what is the reason? When we are talking about reliable energy sources, uh, there is sort of uh, relative regularity. And uh, definitely, uh, my presentation in general uh, uh, will so-called, we have in Russian, uh, like idiom expression, uh, I don't know, maybe in Slavic language that will be clear. У кого что болит, тот о том и говорит. Means if somebody has a painful uh, spot, uh, he will talk about that. Then I will talk about natural gas. Uh, uh, and in general, uh, two main issues uh, countries face and people face. Uh, this is the questions of uh, healthcare policy and energy policy. And of course, like healthcare policy impact uh, us in very personal ways when we get uh, sick or injured. We want to get better as, uh, for a reasonable price. And uh, energy use is uh, equally as personal. All of our decisions depend on some way on energy and uh, at the price of energy. How we travel, what do we eat, uh, what temperature we keep our houses, and which job we work. Uh, there was a question uh, in previous session that we always have to uh, think about the cost of energy because high cost of energy, high cost of electricity drive economy to uh, Pure, poor way, and then we lose uh, jobs, we lose the competitiveness of uh, our products. A look at this, uh, I think, more or less popular graph. Uh, this is uh, that relative regularity, the opinion of, uh, I think, all the uh, technical and scientific society uh, about consequences uh, of uh, different energy carriers in different period uh, of development of uh, human civilization. Uh, that was very popular even uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, 21st century. Uh, then if we look uh, onto this graph, we will see what happened. And we will see that uh, natural gas did not follow this uh, regularity. 
and he didn't uh, took all the power in world energy balance, how it was primarily predicted by everywhere. What happened? We see that natural gas not go uh, up strong, uh, the coal not dead, and uh, renewables started not uh, uh, at the 2030s, but it already started at uh, uh, 2010s, and now we see it's growing and growing. This is a, a picture uh, how ExxonMobil uh, look at, at LNG market in uh, December of 2006. The, you can see it is a complete <coughs> different picture uh, than we see now. And we can uh, watch complete different uh, energy flows and gas flows. And of course, at that time, nobody predicted that uh, North America will be a huge growing uh, energy resource uh, trying to be uh, like first in the world take the first place in uh, producing the, of natural gas and uh, have um, quite, uh, I think, reliable plants to become the first in uh, oil industry. Usually when I show my students uh, this picture, I ask them, what do you think it's uh, about? Uh, for first glance. They said that for, from the first glance, it looks like uh, the map of the war. <laughs> Actually, of course, we can consider like energy market, uh, same uh, like economical war. And uh, fortunately, uh, people uh, losing not the lives, uh, but uh, losing the money, which I think uh, better. But anyway, uh, this is quite tough uh, market, quite tough fighting. And uh, what's a new landscape of global gas market? I consider that there is no separate LNG market. I consider LNG like a part of global natural gas market. Um, What is new landscape? Demand grows uh, in Asia Pacific region. Outrunning growth of demand for LNG, of course. Uh, high price volatility and uncertainty with the demand. Uh, growing competition. A gradual transition to short term and spot pricing. Lowering interest uh, of consumers in large long term contracts. Growing role of uh, aggregators and portfolio investors. Uh, completion of construction of pipeline mega projects. And uh, I think that uh, uh, growing role of geopolitics means like not uh, the real uh, technical and economical evaluation uh, drives the decisions, but uh, some uh, other criteria. Here you can see uh, how consumption of primary energy uh, dynamically grows by the region. And of course, one can see that uh, in uh, Asia, the, there is the strongest uh, uh, growth. Actually, I remember even in, from my childhood, uh, we had the summer house. Oh, by the way, I was born in the small flat uh, with an oven uh, as a heating. No central uh, heating system, no uh, hot water supply at that time. That was the uh, beginning of uh, 60s in St. Petersburg. And uh, if I watch to my family, I think for that uh, happened 56 years from that time, uh, our uh, energy consumption uh, per family grown 
Oh, not because of my four children, of course. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think the personal uh, energy consumption grows probably 10 times from that uh, 60, uh, 60s uh, last century. And we see that now same process happens in <coughs> Asia, in China, uh, in India, in other uh, countries. And we should understand that there is two-thirds of world population uh, live there. Here you see uh, some information about consumption of uh, electricity per person in different countries. And uh, Iceland leads with a huge amount. And here we see uh, more or less, let's say, reasonable uh, consumption uh, in uh, mm, European countries. <coughs> but we see that uh, China, uh, let's say, 30% uh, 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 citizen of China, average citizen, uh, you consume 30-35% uh, less energy per person. And we see that here is a growing economy and uh, growing level of life. And uh, good life closely connected, of course, with energy consumption. And some people calling natural gas as a fuel of uh, rich people. We see that in uh, different country, countries, uh, Different situation happen with the natural gas, but anyway, uh, here we see like in the United States, the consumption grows and uh, domestic production grows. Uh, we see in China, domestic production grows and uh, they spend a lot of money to uh, buy additional uh, gas imported. In India, uh, domestic production declined, but uh, uh, that not uh, because of the policy of the government. In anyway, we see that in general, uh, import of natural gas in India grows too. Uh, here is a graph showing competition between Russian and uh, uh, United States gas. You see here, this is a line, shows uh, the dynamics of the price of Russian gas. And here uh, you see uh, with the blue line, a Russian gas production. And the orange one, this is United States gas production. I think that uh, it's somehow correlated to uh, the prices and uh, both uh, uh, graphs shows the production as high the prices as uh, less gas Russia pro produce and as more gas produce United States. And we can see that uh, North America uh, has quite a lot of uh, project uh, oriented not only for uh, home uh, use but for export. Uh, what is the factors of competitiveness of the gas? Uh, here, like main, I think, way uh, how we can transport natural gas to the consumers. Um, the green one, uh, this is um, integral, integral uh, where uh, LNG prevails. Uh, the blue is a pipeline. You see here uh, this angle means that second pipeline installed. Uh, and uh, this, is f this formula demonstrate uh, relations between distances and the uh, uh, number or volume of the gas. Then we can see that uh, uh, the border between LNG and pipeline lays some here around uh, 4,000 uh, 
4,500 uh, kilometers. It uh, looks in uh, current uh, situation more or less like that. This is the distances from the main uh, production region of Russia to the main markets. And uh, this uh, cycle demonstrates more or less the competitiveness of Russian pipeline gas. You see, uh, it's uh, here in Europe, uh, around <coughs> like uh, Holland, uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, and of course uh, Austria, and uh, some uh, Balkan countries. But what is the real situation with the price of Russian gas? Uh, look here is Russia, and you see uh, that uh, any cost uh, consists of capital investment, production cost, administrative uh, or transportation cost, and uh, gross taxes. You see that Russia has the uh, biggest, hugest amount of taxes included into the price. Uh, about pipeline gas, if we talk, uh, there is a special custom duty that after uh, you sell, you immediately uh, transfer 30% to the government. And then after that, uh, calculate your profit and some other taxes, etc. So in the price of Russian pipeline gas, there is uh, at least 30% always uh, the money goes to sponsor uh, the Russian government. If we imagine that we exclude uh, this uh, uh, taxation, we will see uh, how wider uh, the region of uh, pipeline gas competitiveness uh, become. I even can tell there is a, a country, uh, Japan, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, natural gas, all of them transfer there uh, via, uh, as an LNG. Uh, but I think that uh, it may be the time that even Japan may uh, get the pipeline. I think that would be cheaper to uh, build short pipeline from Sakhalin to Hokkaido than to build a new LNG train if uh, this train uh, uh, has intent to supply Japan. Um, we understand that uh, Asian natural gas demand continue to grow and uh, even uh, grows uh, faster than that was predicted. And if we we'll watch uh, to Europe, uh, different situation. Uh, the prediction uh, here, uh, this graph is connected to LNG and uh, LNG uh, delivery to Europe uh, in last year was uh, quite lower than was expected and Europe uh, bought uh, pipeline gas instead of LNG. We see that in any countries, in, for example, South Korea or China or in European Union, uh, there is a lot of uh, special uh, government uh, issues uh, driving uh, energy industry to uh, more ecological approach. Uh, I would like to like, show you this is the balance, energy balance of China and India. Uh, both has a huge amount of uh, uh, coal and then uh, upon to expectation they will replace this coal with the natural gas. Uh, same time we see that uh, China is the uh, uh, fastest growing energy market and uh, not with uh, a whole amount of energy, with renewables too. But anyway, the uh, part uh, and the role renewables plays in Chinese economy still quite uh, a small one. In uh, Asia, natural gas demand uh, characterized that Japan talk about maybe uh, should a little uh, natural gas consumption. China rapidly increase 
uh, and became the biggest importer in the world uh, by the end of uh, 2020s. Uh, South Korea remained at high level. Uh, Taiwan demand is strong, but restricted by uh, existing terminal uh, capacity. Uh, and the uh, same like in South Asia. And of course, price competitiveness is a problem. I told you that uh, people call natural gas uh, the fuel of uh, rich people. This is an rebalance of Japan. And we see that uh, very few coil here. And the rest is uh, natural gas and uh, nuclear. Japan has a program to uh, uh, restart some of uh, energy blocks. If you look on the energy balance on France, I think it uh, looks uh, quite close to what Japan demonstrates. But if you look on uh, Germany, this completely different approach. And when you travel uh, Germany and France, uh, you immediately understand that it's a different uh, landscape. Uh, you will almost never uh, see the uh, wind energy parks in France. Uh, I've seen, you know, during quite a big travel with my uh, kids, uh, just one near Disneyland, near Paris, I mean the solar, uh, uh, solar power plant. Uh, what will happen then? Uh, this is um, uh, European Union energy balance structure. And uh, I think that uh, it demonstrates us that um, the installed uh, energy uh, capacity uh, for uh, elect electricity manufacturing with uh, uh, natural gas is still quite uh, high. Uh, it's difficult to uh, analyze uh, such a uh, poly criteria and poly factors uh, market where uh, energy business sector uh, play complete different roles in domestic product by different countries. Uh, so uh, in the European Union there is an approach uh, uh, calculating energy intensity as a ratio between gross inland energy consumption and gross domestic product calculated for calendar years uh, for the five main source of energy. Uh, and uh, uh, gross domestic products uh, uh, calculated to avoid impact of inflation with a base uh, uh, year of 2010. What do we see here? We see that energy consumption uh, a little declining. Uh, then uh, gross uh, domestic product goes up and the ratio uh, energy intensity goes down. These are official graphs from uh, European uh, Commission. And what we can see if we, uh, I, I was trying to uh, calculate and estimate uh, same graphs for uh, China plus Japan plus India. You see, here is a, a growing a gross domestic product and the energy consumption goes uh, up. But then you see that energy intensity goes down and we uh, see here uh, that uh, it may go uh, lower than same uh, factor in Europe. What does it mean? Uh, that means that the competitiveness of the economy of uh, these Asian uh, giants uh, becomes better than European Union. And, uh, I close to the end. What we see here? We see here, I think, uh, one more uh, regularity. This is economical regularity. Uh, the market uh, has a main law, uh, proportion between uh, demands and offers. 
What we see here, uh, here is the price of Russian gas, and this is uh, Russian gas consumption in European Union. Uh, when uh, I was the chief engineer of a blue stream, that was uh, end of 90s, end of 90s, and uh, we took uh, Gazprom took investment decision for the project uh, where uh, gas prices was uh, $92, $92 per thousand square meters, uh, cubical meters, sorry. Uh, at that time, the project generate 12% of uh, uh, internal rate of return. Remember, 12 was the price of uh, 92. What then happened? Then happened that the prices goes upper and upper. I can tell you that to imagine uh, uh, 2002, this is a year when a uh, project was put into operation. And you can see that the price here is 2050, not 91. Do you imagine how much profit uh, projects uh, generate immediately. Our estimated payback period was uh, eight years. Project really paid back with the two years. Uh, what do you think? How much profit included at here at these prices? Here was the prices of uh, 50 uh, uh, 500, 550. Uh, I think there is a, uh, 50, 60 percent of uh, return. And we see that when the price goes down, we see immediately the demand goes up. I think that if uh, it will happen, theoretically, that uh, natural gas prices stayed at more or less the same level, let's say, between 100 and 150 uh, dollars uh, per thousand square meters, or uh, cubical meters. We will see complete different picture of uh, uh, the world energy balance. And I absolutely believe that uh, civilization has these gas deposits. And if uh, contemporary technologies, high tech which United States use for this poor uh, shell gas, means the reservoirs is very, very difficult. But it's possible to use same technologies, same fracking for uh, traditional reservoirs increase production in all, all fields and make a very profitable development of new fields. I think here may be an answer for the question we talk. And my problem is that people, at least some people, they are greedy. They want more money and they don't want uh, to think about, uh, let's say, Tomorrow, they want this money now. Thank you very much. <laughs>